Welcome to another episode of the Unbound Book Babes. Today we're going to be talking about Kindle tips and tricks. So I've had my Kindle for about a year and I had no idea what I was doing when I first started. So I kind of wanted to go through and show some of the things I learned that I thought were really cool. Um, and Kristen, you're new to owning a physical Kindle, right? Yes. So for the past, what, 10, 10 ish years, I've just been reading within the Kindle app on an iPhone. Okay. Um, so shame, shame is the name of the game there. <laughs> um, but it's, it's very different, uh, having a physical Kindle versus the app. Yes. Um, the app moves a little bit faster, is a little more responsive. So a little more patience in your Kindle. <laughs> There's so much patience in the Kindle. So comment down below if you have a Kindle and how long you've had it, or if you are just using the Kindle app like Kristen did for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> so to start out, I just want to talk, I'm going to cover like, I think there's like in all like 16 different tips that I'm going to cover. Not all of them. I have some video of me showing you how to do these on the Kindle that I will in that will play back. Uh, but not all of these have a video associated with them. Some of them we're just going to talk through just to kind of like cover some basic features. So the Oasis and the Paperwhite Signature Edition and Paperwhite Edition are all waterproof. All of them have backlit. LED lighting for uh, that's like adjustable tones and then you can like change your font size and change your font style. So there's a couple things within the fonts that I'm going to show you here in a couple minutes. So if you have dyslexia, hang out and um, I'm going to show you a special feature that you can use to help improve reading on the Kindle. So one of the first items that I want to talk about actually is the x-ray function. Kristen, have you ever used your x-ray function on your Kindle? No, Bobby. I did not know it was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is pretty cool. So the x-ray function is actually where you can hold down a word, a phrase or something, and it's actually going to give you a little bit of an explanation of what that is, even if it's in the world. And then you can even open x-ray and it will show you like all the places that that item is mentioned in the book or that person or that place are mentioned in the book. Now, not all books have this because this is something that the author has to do in the background is they have to like put all this information in there. Sometimes they can even like link a Wikipedia page. So it'll pull the Wikipedia information. So this can be really helpful, especially like in fantasy books where you are world building and you're like, who the heck is this person again? If they have x-ray, you can hold down the name and you can be like, oh, this is the high priestess of parthos or whatever it might be so i had accidentally clicked on this before and it like brought me to a wikipedia page and i was like oh that's cool um but i didn't realize the extent that this could be used by the author and i find it i thought i I think I'm going to be using it a lot more in the future because I take a lot of notes and I highlight a lot of sections and make my own notes. And with this, there's probably a bunch of notes that are already taken for me that I could just reference. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you can also like search your Kindle, right? So you can do the search and you can type something in and it will bring up that phrase or whatever within the book. And then you could hold it, hold, like go to that name hold on it, and then it's going to give you all of the places that name is mentioned, but with more detail associated with it. Super. That's awesome, man. That's super helpful in a lot of different ways. Yes. I think the only thing I've used so far is like when you hold the, the word just to see what the definition is. Yeah. <laughs> I spent a lot of time doing that on the same words over and over again. Mm -hmm. Yep. The dictionary <laughs> is great. Um, so Kristen, do you find that like organizing your Kindle seems frustrating? Like, I don't know how many books you have in your Kindle, but I have like over a hundred books on my Kindle and like, 
It took me a very long time to figure out how to organize them in a way that was useful. Um, are you struggling with any of that right now? I would say no, simply because I haven't tried to organize it at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> at a basis level, Bobby and I are very different when it comes to organization. Um, <laughs> so I have just been like, well, if that's in the top five reads, that's what I'm reading this week. <laughs> Okay. Alphabetical order, that'll do. <laughs> Fair enough. So actually, no, I, I never even questioned if there was a way to organize it. <laughs> so this next tip is about grouping series. So like, for example, I own all of the Quarter Thorns Roses on my Kindle. So that's five books currently. And there is actually a way where you can take series and put them together so they show up with like the first item in the series but then it tells you that there's you know five books in that series but they're all like stacked on top of each other in your library view oh that's cool that is... when you go to read does it put them in like the correct order or i guess how do you access them so you, you click, click on it yeah you click on it it opens a secondary page with all five of those titles as the only ones on the screen so beautiful that's pretty cool it's super super yeah it's hands down the way i use my kindle so to utilize this function you go to your settings and you open up and you go to uh, home and library once you're in home and library you can click on reading or library tab rather and then there's a toggle switch to toggle on and off grouping of your series so for example i had it on so i just turned it off and so my series are no longer stacked on top of each other and mm. they're like separate titles in my library then which is quite annoying in fact Cha chaotic i get it yeah yeah absolutely. that's a great feature especially because so many books are in part of a series, mm -hmm. right? So it just scoochies all those into basically a folder, right? Yep, that's exactly correct. So there's also another it's, way. Go ahead. It's like going from having 87 PDF files across your entire back, like desktop screen <laughs> to having like a folder. <laughs> yes. Yep. So there's actually another way and it is creating a collection of items. So in this video, you're gonna see how my series are grouped together, but when I click on them, you're gonna see how I've added them to a specific collection that I created. So for example, here is like A Court of Thorns and Roses. I click on it, it opens all five titles that I own. And then if you press the three dots, it's going to open a menu and you can add to slash remove from collection and you can select a collection to add that title to wow yeah so for example right here i'm gonna go and i'm actually gonna add cc3 to the sjm collection that i created because i have yet to do that since i downloaded it so here i am adding that to my sjm collection and now that is under under that and organized with all of their titles that i own by her wow that's pretty cool so you could just go in and be like there's all 75 sjm books <laughs> yeah. you know the nice thing about that is that nobody can like if it was a physical library people could just walk in and shuffle those around but now nobody can do that to you no <laughs> <laughs> so with collections there's a couple ways to like view your collections so if you go to your settings and you go back to your home and library and your library tab you can see in the collection section it will show you you have three different options for how you view collections within your kindle itself so you can play around with these and do whatever best fits you and how you use your kindle probably one of the more useful um things with collections is the way you can 
not only look at your collections, but also filter the books within your Kindle. So like if you have a ton of books, um, being able to go into your filters tab and see like what ones are downloaded, what ones are on red, what ones are red, you know, where you're, if you wanna just see your Audible collection or your type, I guess is not necessarily a collection. They're two different things. Format probably is a better word. But then you can also go to the other menu and you can click on collections itself and it's just going to pull up your collections. So you can see here that I actually do my collections by author. Um, and then I also have my 2024 reading collection. So I currently, like I've got some of my Kindle books in my uh, like goals to be read in 2024. So I created a collection specifically for that. So when I'm feeling overwhelmed, when I open my Kindle and see my over 100 Kindle books, I can just be like, ignore all those, go to my collections and just focus on the titles that I should be reading to pursue achieving my reading goals for the year. Wow, that's a great idea. That's amazing. Yeah. Once I, I like learned that. this, it was super life-changing. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. I might actually have to spend some time organizing my Kindle. That actually seems very helpful. <laughs> yeah, and you can actually do this from a computer, too. So if you, like, go into your Kindle on your Amazon account, uh, you can create collections and, and put them in lists there as well. So we know that Kindles are kind of slow, uh, so, <laughs> so being able to do that is helpful. You can also do it in your Kindle app as well. So this, this functionality is the same. Oh, huh. I don't think I've, oh yeah, I have. I was going to say, I don't know if I've ever accessed Kindle on a desktop. And then I was like, no, I, maybe. I didn't know that was possible either. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have video of that today, but it, you can do it through your, uh, Kindle account on web page. So there's more than one way to like create a collection within your Kindle. So I wanted to show like the ways that you can add a new collection to start adding other titles to. So for example, this is where we just left off where I've, you know, gone to my settings up here and hit my collections. And you can see that right next to that is an add button. So you can create a collection and you can also mark a collection as a favorite. So you, in your filter view, you can actually say, show me my favorite collections only. So this is really useful for that. Is CJ Archer uh, checked as one of your favorites? It's not, no, I, I don't have <laughs> any favorites in my collections. It should be though, it should be. <laughs> it should be. If you're in your home screen and you want to add a selection, you can do your settings and then at the very bottom it says create collection. So you can do the same thing right from your home menu as well. You don't even have to filter anything out. Oh, that's great. That's super user friendly. Super nice. And I like that there's three ways you can do it, like depending on where you're at in your Kindle, if you're thinking of it and you're like, oh, I want to do that. You can just... You know, there's multiple places that you can do it in to achieve it. So there is actually two things I want to talk about for accessibility. So I'm a huge advocate for being inclusive. So as you should be. <laughs> but I have a sibling who actually has a little bit of dy dyslexia. So you can actually change your fonts in Kindle and they have a font designed for um, dyslexic readers actually to help improve their ability to read on the device. So here I am, I'm gonna go into my book and I'm going to, um, you can also like show, I'm showing you here how to zoom in and out there, you know, you can pinch the screen or you can change it. But then if you tap the top of the screen, like you're gonna go back to your home page, uh, there is a font button where you can actually completely format your Kindle. So you can make a theme, you can like save all your settings, and then they have different th themes 
within it. So different margin sizes, line spacing, all of that stuff. But in the font section, if you click on it, there is something called open dyslexic. And so this changes your font to be in a fashion where it's easier for individuals with dyslexia to read. And I love this. When I found out about this, I was like, and my friend Paige told me about it because uh, she's like, sometimes when I'm really tired and I still want to read, this font actually is a lot easier for, for my, on my eyes. And I was like, oh, how do I find that? So I just think this is fantastic. And then there's several other things you can actually do within that same like font category or um, structuring your uh, view of your Kindle. So you can also do things like change your margins, change your line spacing, um, change your orientation, change your alignment. So if you want center alignment or if you want like that paragraph look, um, it's just, it's so customizable. There's also like another section that- Man, I don't know why, but having my Kindle set to landscape gives me all of the ick. It I gives know. me- it makes me so uncomfortable. Just the thought of it. I've never even changed it. But just the simple thought of holding that side. Ugh. I don't yes. even unlock my orientation on my phone. <laughs> yes. Yep. I don't either. Mine's always locked out too. I hate that. Um, side story. I was on a plane on Friday and there was somebody reading on an iPad and they had it in landscape and I was just, I could see them through the seats <laughs> and I was like, I don't even want to read over your shoulder because, <laughs> because I don't if, like if that. You, if you're a landscape user on Kindle or iPad, can you tell us more about yourself in the comments? I want to know, I just want to know your story. I want to know how you got here. I want to know who hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to back this up a little bit because I do want to chat about something that's right here. You can show a clock while reading. So if you're like at the top of your screen, you can toggle this on and off. So within your book, you can actually see the time, which honestly, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. I might keep that off. But at the same time, if I'm like, <laughs> Bobby, you really need to read only for 30 more minutes before bed. Like this would be nice to turn on because I don't have to like reach for my phone or anything. The time is just right there. Yeah, the number of times that I'm reading whilst waiting for something important to happen, I should definitely be able to see the clock. Absolutely. I, like, <laughs> I agree. I'd be like, yeah, I an eye on the clock. And <laughs> yeah, I, I both hate that and love that. I don't want to know what time it is. I want to get lost in, in my little story, but yep. I also desperately need to know what time it is. Yep, totally. I get it. That dyslexia font is just blowing my mind that all they needed was a different font. That's so wild to me. I think there's more to it. I think there's different levels of dyslexia. Like some have like more issues than other people. But um, yeah, that blows my mind too. So this other thing also I mean, blows my mind. A lot that goes into it. But like I've known a lot of people that get really worked up about font type. Yeah. And now I just have so many questions about font type in general and the feelings that is associated with it. And I guess how closely that's tied to dyslexia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And whatever, wherever you may be on the spectrum. I just, it's just opened a world of questions for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I can understand why. <laughs> um, so this other thing is also really good too for accessibility. So we, you can listen to audiobooks on your Kindle and I'll get into that in just a second. But if you are hard of seeing and you have a Kindle, um, you know, you can change your font size and your, and stuff like that. But you can also have, if you have Bluetooth headphones hooked up to your Kindle, you can actually do a, you can also do a voice view screen reader. So that way when you click on something, the Kindle will actually read it out to you. So if you go to your settings and you go to accessibility, you can turn on voice view screen reader. When you toggle this on, 
Like mine's gonna give me an error actually because it was looking for headphones and I didn't have my headphones on and near me. But if you have them, when you click on something on the Kindle, the screen is actually going to read that back to you. Amazing, you know, because audiobooks are really expensive. So to be able to have like Kindle Unlimited and then to have a, a way to listen to these books without paying, one audiobook was like $40. Like, yeah. The accessibility that goes along with being a, I mean, I'm sure it's not um, the best listening to Siri read yeah. the book to you. <laughs> yeah. But still more accessible than paying a crazy amount for those audiobooks. Mm -hmm. Those are not cheap, even mm -hmm. if you have Audible and everything. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm. Amazing. I love it. Yeah, I do too. I was really happy to, to learn that, in fact. So there's another kind of cool feature that is like page flipping, I guess. So if you swipe up from the bottom of your screen, you're going to get this other view that is going to break down into sections. So you'll see I'll tab over to this grid view. So in the forward section, this book has like a glossary, a pronunciation guide, all of the maps. So in this section, I can quickly tap through to a certain page number and see these items. And then I can also click over away from like the pronunciation guide into chapter one, and I can see and skip to the first page of chapter one. So this is a really easy way to jump to certain sections of the book. If you, for whatever reason, need to bounce around, like a lot of times I wanna go back to the map, but I don't know what page it's on. I just know that it's in this section. I can go back to the beginning section of the book where all of the information they give me and I can tap on the picture of the map and then bounce back forward to where I left off reading. Or like when you're reading and you forget whose point of view the chapter is and now you got to go back to the beginning of the chapter to figure out. <laughs> yup. No, just me? Yup, that's how I'm going to use it. <laughs> nope, that's actually a perfect recommendation. <laughs> Wait, what did she say six pages ago? This seems like a bombshell. <laughs> <laughs> did you know you could put a passkey on your Kindle? I had no idea. And I was actually wondering about that. Like, somebody could just have my Kindle. Yeah, someone could just, like, grab your Kindle and start reading your spicy content. <laughs> uh, well, honestly, that's too bad for them because <laughs> they're going to be scarred for life. <laughs> So if you go to your settings and you go to your account, nope, it's device options. I couldn't remember. That's why I made a video, guys. <laughs> Privacy and security, you can create a pin for your device. You can toggle it on and then it's a minimum of four digits, but they can't be like repeating numbers. You can't put one, one, one in there, like do something more complex than that. So really useful tip for when I die and I don't need everyone looking at my Kindle. <laughs> you know, it's honestly, yes. Should I have a password for the type of stuff that I read? Absolutely. However, I am so sick of trying to remember passwords. I'm done. I'm maxed out. Steal my shit. <laughs> yeah, I think it's more useful when you're like a parent who has like a like a kid who, who mm. can read pretty, pretty all right. Like they're that 10 to 15 <laughs> year old child and they're just being nosy. Um, which actually brings me to uh, something I don't have a video for. Well, I kind of do. Look at that professional segue. She's like a professional podcaster. <laughs> That's the just a beautiful segue. <laughs> so... The thank you, I try. <laughs> it, it actually Nailed just, like, it. happened. But um <laughs> you can have Kindle kids set up and you can actually do a Kindle household. So you can have other adults log in to their Amazon account and you guys can use like the same device and toggle like between them. So, and I haven't <laughs> used this. My mom knows more about this because she manages my nieces and nephews. But if you go to the settings and you go to household sharing, you can actually um, 
just like set up your household. You can add an adult or a kid. And then when you add a kid, it's going to like lock out certain stuff for them that they shouldn't see. I don't want to share my device with anybody. What a dangerous game. Very dangerous game. I know they game. say hunting I know they say hunting humans is the most dangerous game, but to me, in my world, sharing a Kindle device is the most dangerous game. Yeah, I would agree with that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, super super great for families, right? I mean, each Kindle ebook reader is a hundred some odd bucks. You don't have that for yeah. each individual person in the household. So it makes yep. sense. I wouldn't do it, but I'm glad it works for other people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And be on the lookout for our episode that will go live on Friday because we're actually talking about different types of e-readers. So, And it's going to make you so mad. It's going to make if you, you so Kindle, mad. you are going to be so mad. So I'm mad. Upset. I'm mad. <laughs> I'm so upset. <laughs> so if you really want to learn about that, um, be on the lookout for that episode and um, or pop <laughs> over there and, and go and watch it before you purchase anything. I promise you mistakes were made in my life a year ago <laughs> when I bought a Kindle. Um, Ditto. Yeah. Buyer's remorse. <laughs> yep. No spoilers, though. Yeah. <laughs> If you're like me, like my Kindle is actually on light mode most of the time, but you can put it in dark mode. Like my phone, the Kindle app on my phone is in dark mode, but my Kindle itself, I like it being in light mode because it true it's an e-ink reader, so like it looks like paper and ink like a printed book and I actually really like that on my Kindle. But if you are like a dark mode, you know, person you can go to your settings yeah i know you are <laughs> live and die in dark mode <laughs> yep and then you can go to accessibility appearance and light and dark mode and also in the top menu and the drag down menu there's also a toggle on for light and dark mode as well out of all of these tips and tricks i think that was the only one i knew how to use because i was like gotta can't have no Dark yeah. mode, always. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even my iPad is in dark mode. <laughs> yeah, so is mine. You know how, like, on Google, when you you can bring up different profiles? Mm hmm And so if there's one that I bring up and it's not in dark mode and it comes up all white and I'm all... <laughs> yeah, it's, like, blinding. I'm like, oh my god, I wasn't prepared <laughs> for that. <laughs> so you can actually link... Uh, your Goodreads to Kindle because Amazon owns Goodreads. So like when I start a new book, it prompts me right away to be like, add to Goodreads. And I'm like, yes, please. Uh, so is that what that prompt is for? I have always just cleared it without reading it. Yeah, it gives you like book, like some information <laughs> about the book too, but I utilize it for add to currently reading list on Goodreads. So it will update automatically for me. Oh, I gotta start doing that. Yeah, so to do that, you go to your settings and you go to your account and you just click on Goodreads and then you can can connect your Goodreads account through here. Beautiful. Yes. The being able to link to Goodreads is really nice um, because if you borrow a book and then highlight all of your favorite passages and return it, all of your highlights disappear. But now they're trapped within Goodreads mm -hmm. forever. Forever. Well, for as long as Goodreads plays nice with Amazon. <laughs> Which, honestly, they need a, Amazon needs to put some manpower into fixing the Goodreads app because I was at the airport and I finished Light Lark and I was doing my little review on my phone and the freaking app crashed. And I was like, I just <sighs> lost everything I typed about that review. And so then I got mad and I didn't leave a review. So Amazon <laughs> fix Goodreads app so it stops crashing because I'm not leaving reviews because I do so much for my phone because I'm on the go all the time and it keeps crashing. So if you want people to utilize your site and actually leave reviews about books, fix your crap. Thanks. Fix, fix your app, man. Who even uses a desktop anymore? Well, ex except for right now. But ex outside <laughs> of this exact moment, when would I ever get on a desktop computer? <laughs> yeah. You know it, how much stuff I have avoided doing simply because I didn't want to get on a desktop computer to do it? <laughs> My taxes. I was just going <laughs> to say, <laughs> I was just say pay bills and taxes. Because <laughs> uh, uh, that's what I did this morning. <laughs> not my taxes, not yet, <laughs> but I was organizing documents for it. Okay, so 
going back to our mention about Kindle audiobooks um, or Audible, you can, with Bluetooth headphones, listen to your audiobooks on your Kindle device or from your Kindle device. So you can see here I'm going to my Audible books. I have seven of them and I you can click on them. Of course, they still download like normal. And then also, if you are going to, like if you have the book and the audio book, you can have your Kindle read to you with like the book and at least I know the app does this. I haven't, I don't, I can't remember if I've tried it on my Kindle device itself. Uh, but you can listen to it while it highlights the word it's speaking to you and read and follow like along. And that's super nice. I'm pretty sure you can do that in Kindle too because I'm, I, Paige does it all the time. But I know for sure I've done it on my phone when I was like walking on the treadmill. Is that a really monotone voice? So, n no, it is the actual audiobook. So whatever narrator that they've hired oh, for it... never mind. Cut all of this out. Cut all of this out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's a good point to make that this is actually, like, the audiobook. It's not, like, the, like, Siri reading to you from your phone or whatever. It's not a computer. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, that is a good point to make. So... There's a couple other things that I wanted to mention as well. Um, and I'm going to save the best for last, like something I found out that literally is like going to be life changing. I haven't done it yet, but it's going to be life changing when I do it. Um, you can read PDFs. So you can like your Kindle has an email that you can email PDFs to and download them and read. A lot of authors use this to send out advanced reader copies or ARCs to a group of individuals that are like helping them promote the book or just reading and giving uh, like earlier reviews on the book and stuff like that. You can also link your Libby app um, and send, I don't necessarily think it's, you can link your Kindle through the Libby app and send books to your Kindle. Is that how that works, Kristen? Because I've never actually done this, but I know you have. Yeah, I love it on Libby when when you're able to use that that Kindle app. You just go in and say open with Kindle and then on my phone, so the Libby app is going to be on your phone, so then it's like get Amazon book and then you go yeah, get Amazon Kindle or whatever and then it's like continue shopping cuz Amazon always wants always be shopping, right? And then uh you can either continue shopping or just go to the Kindle app. Yeah. Um, Speaking of Amazon so, shopping, link down below is going to be our webpage. We have some recommendations on there for books and things that we use in our daily lives. Like if you want, you know, the foundation that I use or my shampoo or Kristen's shampoo or the treats we give our dogs, like whatever. Um, <laughs> we have some of that linked on That's our the page. We give ourselves. <laughs> yes. Um, just know that those links on our webpage are Amazon associate links. So we get a small commission. I can tell you that it's pennies. So um, anything helps though. So a penny will eventually add up to a hundred pennies and then we'll have a dollar and we can buy a book. So um, <laughs> if you, we would be at grateful. At the goodwill. <laughs> yeah, at the goodwill. Um, we would be grateful if you did use those links, but no pressure there. But I just wanted to mention that our webpage is linked down below. You can find quite a bit of stuff, a little bit of stuff about us. There's a blog there as well. Um, so yeah. Another thing I found out is like, I have the Amazon Paperwhite edition, but on the Paperwhite Signature edition, there's wireless charging. Hmm. So if you've got like one of those like, like little things that's a wireless charger, but also like props up your phone, you can put your Kindle on that and it can be charging while you're reading. I don't know if I would ever need that because my battery on my Kindle lasts forever, but it's something useful to know that like, I had no idea until I read something about it. I didn't either. That's cool. Kindle Paperwhite Signature is wireless charging? Correct. Cool, cool, cool. Two more things for you guys. Um, the first one being something I want to remind you guys about is that 
if you are on Amazon and you go to the, like the Kindle section, there are daily deals. So like if you are looking to, like if you don't have Kindle Unlimited, but you want a new ebook and there's nothing at your library or through one of your library apps like Libby that is, you know, enticing to you, you could go to the Kindle section on Amazon and look at their daily deals. And a lot of times they have books for like $1.99 or 99 cents and stuff like that. So don't forget to find those deals and utilize them. A lot of the classics are like free. Yes. Yeah. Like like old, old, uh, what was it? The Odyssey, Dante's Inferno. Yeah. Yeah, all that old, old stuff. Although I do think Dante's Inferno that was free on Amazon, I do believe it was in the original Italian. So. <laughs> Good luck with that if I you did can't not speak it this far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I accidentally bought or borrowed from Hoopla one time a, uh, a book in Portuguese. <laughs> I was like, yeah. That's not the one I want. I can't read that. <laughs> what is going on here? <laughs> I can't read that. Um, so last but not least, this is this is a tip for Kindle, but not necessarily something you can do on your Kindle. But please, please just hang in there for a second. I promise this is useful information. So I have a Barnes & Noble's free membership, but you can spend $25 a year and be part of their, like, you know, pro membership. I don't know what it's actually called. And you get a few things through that pro membership. You get extra points when you purchase things. You get a free uh, ebook a month. But my problem is, is that I don't use the Nook app. I don't, you know, because I, I was trying to see, does this make sense for me to invest the $25 in? And so I was like, doing some research about how you can send, if you can send your like Nook ebook to your Kindle. And because the formats are different, you cannot. But there is a software called Calibre that you can download to a computer or a laptop. And you can actually take that ebook from your Barnes and Noble's purchase, put it into your Calibre because Calibre is really, a file organization tool for ebooks on a computer device. But then what you can do is you can actually take that Nook formatted ebook, change the format type, and send it to your Kindle. Wow, that sounds like a lot of work. Um... It is a lot of work, but <laughs> if you currently have a Barnes and Noble's membership and you're not utilizing that because you have a Kindle instead of like a Nook, it could be yeah. useful for you to transfer the file and have that on your device as well. That's true. I mean, useful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But such a headache that all the ebook readers <sighs> don't use the same files. I'd like to petition. I'd like to petition who's ever in charge of this that I'm mad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad. <laughs> I agree with that. I agree with that sentiment. <laughs> so those are all the Kindle tips and tricks that I have for you today. Uh, Kristen, did you, did you learn anything new? I learned everything new. Like I said, I think the only thing I knew how to use was dark mode. So comment down below if you're like me and learned a ton of new stuff today. Let us know what you're going to use the mostest. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video with another reader friend. And until next time, keep reading.